If you head out into the garden to find that your crops have been munched by an unknown predator, chances are you might have rats in your garden. Kevin Spirito here from Epic Gardening, where it's my goal to help you grow a greener thumb. Not only have I had problems with rats at the homestead in the garden, munching on different crops, which we'll talk about in a second, but I've also had a problem with them in the home. There's a hummingbird right there. That was really cool to see. So I'll show you a clip really quickly of some of the stuff I've had to deal with in my house. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> oh, there he goes. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? What? So I had a Tokyo drifting rat in my house that was freaking me out. It had to be dealt with as well as rats out here in the garden. So in this video, we're gonna go through how rats behave. You have to understand the pest, you have to become the pest in order to combat it and prevent it. And we'll talk about some strategies to just lessen their ability to bother your crops. But also we'll talk about some trapping options for you later in the video, including a trap that I think is probably the most effective one that I've personally seen. So cultivate that like button and I will decrease your rat populations by 50%. And let's get into the video. When you're dealing with any pest, you have to understand how they work on a fundamental level. What do they like to eat? Where do they like to hide? Where do they like to nest? All that kind of stuff. So with rats, I mean, they're, they're disease vectors. You can get disease through their urine, through their droppings, through their saliva. Look up the black plague if you are unfamiliar with that. But you wanna know what are the signs of rats in your garden? I mean, they can climb up your tomato vines, eat your tomatoes. They'll climb up trees sometimes, eat your fruit. It's a really big problem for some gardeners, including myself. So how do you know if you're actually dealing with rats? The first thing you'll notice is some sort of tunnel. It's about two to four inches in diameter and sometimes they'll have these little runs that come out of that tunnel and these will often be on borderways. So on your garden fence, if you have a fence actually surrounding your garden itself, some sort of edging, it might be along there. Next up you have their droppings, which is probably the most telltale sign of rats. You've got those half inch long cylindrical droppings where they're out in the garden, you can see them pretty easily, but they're even easier to see if they're maybe in your garden shed or God forbid indoors where I had to deal with them. They'll have those droppings and they can kind of like smear and they're sort of greasy. And that's how you know you're dealing with a rat. It's a big looking dropping, kind of gross, but that is one way to know that you have them. Finally, the most heartbreaking way to know that you have rats is by looking at your actual crops and noticing parallel teeth marks. So that sort of gnawing parallel teeth mark that's gonna show up on your root crops or maybe your tomatoes or your fruits, whatever they're eating in your garden, that's how you know it's a rat and not something else. If you're dealing with rats or you think you might be dealing with rats, then prevention is gonna be one of the best things you can do because rats are what's called neophobic. They are afraid of new things, which means if you add a trap later on, it might be a while before they actually get there. So here's a great example of something I'm doing really poorly in my garden to prevent from rats. This is what I call the cardboard graveyard, which I'll use for sheet mulch, all sorts of different applications in the garden. But this is a great little nesting area for rats. They need shelter, they need food, they need water. Water is actually the most important thing they need. Mice can get it from food. Rats need to actually drink water, find a water source. So what's a great place for a rat to hang out? Well, in this covered cardboard area where they can shimmy in between all these different layers. If it ever rains, probably some pools of water down there they can hang out in. And there, who knows? The compost bin's right over there. There might be some food sources that they can munch on. Not a great idea. So if I really wanted to prevent rats in this area, I should at the very least put this up off the ground, put it on some bench or something, stack it up and just keep it off so there's no shelter for the rats. So here's another example of a place that is the perfect area for rats to hang out in. I have my garden shed, here's my rainwater tank, and I just have this pile of wood from stuff that got chopped down that I haven't even touched yet. So what do you think they're gonna do? There's some debris here, they're gonna nest in here, and they're gonna scavenge around, go into my garden at night and eat my crops. So I have to clean this up. I'll put this up off the ground, again, just to make sure that there's nowhere easy for them to make a nest. Continuing on with prevention, something that might hurt a little bit to stop doing would be to stop feeding wild animals. So if you have like a bird feeder that's dropping the seed all over the ground, that's a great way to passively feed rats too. So you may wanna either relocate that or stop that or minimize that to some degree. Like we said, they also like fresh water sources. So if you have rainwater capture, if you have irrigation systems, if you have some sort of pond or something like that, just make sure you limit that as much as you can. 
For example, I have irrigation, right? And so I'm making sure I'm checking all my connections that I'm not constantly leaking water. I found one a couple days ago. I had to get a new hose to fix it. Now I, I'm not putting a pool of fresh water on the ground in a semi-sheltered area for the rats to hang out in. There was another thing that almost all of us do as gardeners that rats absolutely love to hang out in. So there's a couple tips I have for you on prevention there too. So here's a master class on how not to manage a compost bin to prevent rats. This really isn't even a compost bin. I'm in the middle of designing a huge compost bin here at the homestead. So in the meantime, I have this bagster and I just have thrown some of my debris and my paper shreddings in here. This really is the perfect area to attract rats. So I'm doing the opposite of what I should be doing here, mostly because I don't have that compost bin set up, but you've got ample food, You've got water because the compost is probably holding onto a little bit of moisture there. And then you have the shelter element. So compost bins really in a gardener's life, it's probably one of the places you're giving the most opportunity for rats to hang out in. So if you have a standard compost bin that's connected to the ground, then screen off the bottom six inches or so of vertical height with hardware cloth and also screen the bottom off completely. Or if you really have a big problem, just use a tumbler composter or switch to something that's completely enclosed so you don't have any opportunity for them to get in. No matter what you do, you are still going to find little crevices in your home or in your shed that a rat can get through. I mean, this is how they got through in my house. At least I think it's how they got through. So I had someone come out and take a look and kind of do a scan of every little entryway into either my garden or into my home. And so what happened here is there's these couple little just punches through of my stucco, which is kind of frustrating when I bought the home. But what we did is we put in kind of like a steel wool, but it's way, way sharper. It's sharp on both ends. So as soon as the rat's nose or whiskers or whatever touch it, it's not going anywhere near it because it's just gonna get completely cut up. And you can just stuff that in all these little crevices and it really works well for deterring them from entering into a structure you don't want them to come in. If you've done all the prevention that you can possibly do and they're still coming into your garden, there are some things you can do to actually prevent them from getting at the crop that you most want to protect. So I'm down low here in the tomato alley. I've got some tomatoes coming in. They're not quite ripe yet, probably not ready for a rat to attack. But what a lot of people will do is they'll take a mesh bag, and this is a very intensive process, but if you only have a few tomatoes and you want them this season, you don't want rats to get at them, you can do something like this. And so you take a mesh bag and you just cinch it around each tomato. A lot of people will also do this in their fruit trees, so I'll show you my apricot tree and something you could do there as well. So here's the apricot tree that actually was on my property when I moved in. Really happy to have this here and fruiting up, as you can see, some beautiful apricots here. Don't use this bag, this is a Ziploc bag. I just don't have a mesh bag, but what all you would do is just take it. You could even do it around this whole cluster if you wanted mesh because you need it to breathe. And you just go like that. You'd use a little twist tie, cinch it around like that, and you've protected it as much as you reasonably can. This also protects from birds, which is kind of a nice little one-two punch. If you've done your best efforts, but a rat has still munched on something, a tomato, a pepper, a carrot, just throw it away or throw it in the compost. Don't try to salvage it and wash it and then eat it. The risk of disease is just too high. There's no point in gambling like that. But we've talked about prevention, which for sure is the best way to deal with rats if you don't have to deal with them in the first place by cleaning your space, making sure you've removed food and water sources, all that kind of stuff. That's gonna be your best bet. We've talked about mitigation, things like bagging your crops to protect them from rats that are already in your garden. But we do have to discuss extermination. If you want to dispatch a rat because the problem is just too severe, you're losing too many of your crops, or in my case, they're literally running around your home trying to eat your flour and your pancake mix, which I did not appreciate, sometimes you do have to dispatch a rat. Now, when I was growing up, it was either the snap traps or it was the glue traps. The snap traps always felt violent, but they felt like at least the rat died quickly, which I think is what you would want to do, the humane thing to do. There's the glue trap, which as a kid, I remember they were used a couple times when I was growing up and it was kind of miserable. You'd see the rat like breathing against the glue and it was, oh, it just kind of, even today, it just kind of makes me shudder. And I remember having to throw those rats away and dispatch them and, and I really didn't like it. And so what I've decided to do is, given the fact that I will try to protect my garden from rats by prevention and mitigation, I will do some extermination to make sure that they're not munching on everything that I'm trying to grow here and eat for my family and my friends and even some donations out here in the community. 
I'm gonna do some extermination. If I'm gonna do that, I wanna make sure that it's the most humane and quickest kill possible, which is why I've moved over to something called the automatic trap. Before we get into what the automatic trap is, and they are the sponsor of today's video, what you have to think about is where do you actually place the trap? How do you make sure rats are gonna be at the place that you place it? And how do you make sure you're actually gonna catch the rats? Remember, they're neophobic, they don't like new things. So if you just slap a new trap up, they're gonna be like, okay, nice try, dude. I'm out of here, I'm gonna go eat something else in your garden, right? So garden is a pretty big competition for a trap. So what you wanna do is you take these little lure tasters which come in the kit and it's got a little bit of bait in here and you just break it. So you crack it like that and then you pin it to a couple different locations. So I'm gonna put one here next to the shed and what you're doing is you're gonna look for bite marks along this, that, that's how you know. You leave it out for three days, you look, see if you see light bite marks, medium or really heavy biting. That's how you know if rats are coming to this area and you can slowly start to then introduce the trap, which I'll show you in just a second. So I'm gonna pin this one up here. So I already know where the rats are on my property, but this is what you would do. You'd go around to different areas, take your best guess, things that are far away from other competitive food sources like a compost bin or a garden, you wanna test those areas, see if they're there, move it around till you find those bite marks. Then you get into using the trap. So here's the trap, here's everything you need for the trap. It's actually one of the more interesting designs I've ever seen for a rat trap. And trust me, I've tried just about every single one out there. So it's called the Automatic Trap A24. You have this cap here. This is where you put your bait. So let's do that first. You can slide this off. They give you a bait pack. You can also use a custom pack like this. Put your bait in just the top here and slide it in. I'm gonna use the one that they included. Let's see what it smells like. That's what it looks like. It smells kind of like coconut oil. So something that rats definitely would like to go for. So you just wanna affix it in there. Okay, our bait is in. We'll put the cover back on. We'll affix it. Now, how does the trap actually work? You see this little CO2 canister here. You just remove this. You screw this into this base right here. And that's gonna immediately pressurize the system. So I'm all the way in. I just heard it fill up. Now, the way this works, you can see a little bit of the bait down there, right? But there's also a little bar. The bait's actually covering it right now. But that bar, when it triggers, this orange piece right here will fly across and it will hit whatever is in its place. So I've got a little cucumber here. I don't think it will fit. So let me go get something different to show you how this works. I'm just gonna use a stick and what I'm doing here is I'm going to trigger this little bar right here and watch what happens. You gotta be kind of careful here, obviously. <coughs> Woo, that scared me. So anything that that hits is gonna immediately die, which is why it's called the humane trap. Given the fact you're going to kill the rat, that's probably the fastest and most humane way to do it. Now, there's a couple other things that you can do here. You've got this little counter that you can put on. So I can slide this on here and it'll know if it's deployed the trap, because sometimes you'll have like another rodent will come through and eat. So you can press this button here and you've got a counter here that'll count every time this is deployed. But let's go ahead and put this in the garden. So I have the trap here. I just added the base that came with the kit. So the base just allows you not to have to mount it to a wall. You certainly could just take this piece and mount it directly to a wall like this and a rat or a mouse or whatever could come up in here. The base just lets me set it on the ground. I know this area already has rats. All I need to do is just place it here of course, pre-feeding the area, making sure the rat feels that it's safe in this area is a good idea. Remember, they're neophobic. But all that's going to happen is they're going to come up, investigate the trap. They're going to go up. Remember, the bait's up in this section right here. So they're going to go up. They'll use that little metal bar, and they'll pull it, and it will trigger the hammer that will come in like this, and then they'll just drop down right here. So you'll know because you'll come out and you'll actually see them. But if you don't, you do have this counter that knows if it deployed or not. So at least you'll know that something triggered it whether they somehow got out, unlikely, or they got killed, and then something else came and took it away, you'll know with the counter. So all I have to do is just let this trap work its magic. Sometimes in the garden, you do have to take matters into your own hands and actually control and exterminate some pests, whether it's a tomato hornworm or an aphid control problem. And with rats, something I've had a problem with here at the homestead, and it got so out of whack that I needed something to control. If you're gonna do it, I feel like you gotta do one that's going to kill the animal in the most humane way possible, which is what I found automatic trap to be also incredibly effective. It's just 
the best one that I've found. As far as disposal of the animal, the best thing to do, first of all, check your local laws, your local ordinances and see what they recommend. You can also bury it way deeper than any pest could dig up, maybe like a foot and a half deep or so, completely fine. I personally probably wouldn't toss it into the compost pile, not something I really wanna be mixing back into my soil, but I know it's been done before, just not something I would recommend. When it comes to the garden and managing pests, Sometimes, whether it's a tomato hornworm, whether it's an aphid, whether it's rats and mice, you do have to take matters into your own hand and do a little bit of culling of that population. Because we have to remember, our gardens aren't even natural ecosystems. We're pulling in plants from all around the world, places that evolved you know, in South Africa, in Asia, in Europe, and we're all growing them right here in our garden. So our garden itself isn't really a natural ecosystem. It makes sense that sometimes pest population might get a little bit out of control. So I would go with the automatic trap if you do wanna get rid of rats, mice, anything like that. With that said, I really hope this helped understand how to deal with rats and rodents on a fundamental level from prevention to mitigation to control if you really do need to do that. And hope you enjoyed it. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing. Testing, 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 testing. Continuing on with, continuing on, continuing on 